Today we're looking at Birmingham Pen Company's Andrew Carnegie Steel Blue. Hi, I'm Adam and I'm an ink guy. I get inks, test them, and share the results with you. I'm just going to call this ink Andrew Carnegie from now on, but Birmingham's Andrew Carnegie is a blue ink. Before we get to the writing samples, let's take a look at the sciencey bits. Up first is chromatography, and I agree with Vita that I've learned a lot by doing multiple chromatographies. The one on the left is done the way it's supposed to be done. I put a line of ink down, I dunk it in the water for 10 to 15 seconds, and what we see is a purple, a, th a thicker purple line, and then it becomes very light blue as it works its way up to a super light blue at the top. Now the one on the right, I let dry for 10 minutes before I dunk it into the water. I keep it in there for that same 10 to 15 seconds and it looks almost exactly the same as the one that was done before it. It doesn't creep as high up on the page, but what we see is no water resistance for this ink and we anticipate no cleaning problems. Resistance tests are done to see how well this can hold up on the page and how hard it might be to clean out of a pen. I let the smear dry for three days before I test it. When we look at the highlighter, we see it holds up kind of fair. It wouldn't be my preference, but it will hold up on a highlighter. You could still read what's underneath it. Now water gets it moving. It's only down there for 30 seconds before I just dab it straight back up. It doesn't move a whole bunch of the ink, but it definitely moves a lot of it. If I gave it more time or I scrubbed it, I'm sure more would come up. The pen flush does the same as the water. It moves a lot of the ink, it gets it reactivated and going, but it does not remove it entirely from the page. Just don't wipe your paper after you have some smear. Bleach, on the other hand, completely pulls it off the page. I wouldn't expect this to be bleach resistant. Now this is a bell curve or a normal distribution on the viscosities or the flow of the inks. For the 365 inks I have tested, I have found an average viscosity of 2.5. Keep in mind here that 2.1 to 2.9 is the normal range for the flow or viscosity of inks. Birmingham's Andrew Carnegie has, an av has a viscosity of 1.79. When we look at the bell curve, that's the word I'm looking for, we see that it is a very wet ink. Now we can suspect they're made by diamine and diamines often are very good flowing, which this is as an ink. Now this bell curve is for the average dry time of the inks. For the 365 inks I tested, I found an average dry time of 17 seconds. And the range of normal is from 13 to 21 seconds. Now Birmingham's Andrew Carnegie has an average dry time of 16 seconds. We can see that this is well within that normal range. That means it works well for any pen. It shouldn't be a problem. This should not be an ink that does not match to a pen, where sometimes pens and inks don't match. This should not be any kind of a problem because it is directly in that yellow, almost in the center of the normal range. Now to find my average dry time, I average the dry time on my writing samples done on Clairefontaine, Tomoe River, and Rhodia paper for both the extra fine and medium nib. Now let's look at the writing sample. I got this ink in sample form, and to keep my writing samples consistent, I use a Jinhao 159 with a Goulet 1.1 stub. I use a Jinhao X450 with a Goulet medium nib and a Jinhao X750 with the extra fine Goulet nib. I'm going to have to say this every time their samples come up. There's my problem. They're messy. That's it. They're messy. Do this in a very ink safe place like in the bathtub. That's where you have to fill your pens with this, the bathtub. I tested a whole bunch of them. They're frustrating. They make a mess. I want regular samples. I know I start out by, you know, in, in, other, in another review talking about how I like that they tried something different as it weighs on me. I don't like it. I give them credit for trying. It just doesn't work well. Looking at the Clairefontaine, we have no bleeding, no ghosting. The 1.1 stub at the top. We have no feather, no spread, no halo, no sheen, 
some color variation. It's a very nice light blue. Very nice light blue, and it gets a bit darker in spots, which is pretty nice. Not a lot. Like, you would hope to see more of it here, but then we see darker here, and I don't know what happened. But we're not see. We see a little darker here at the top of the Birmingham, a little darker at the ham. So you are getting color variation. When we move on to the extra fine, we have no feather, no spread, no halo, no sheen. Some color variation. Some color variation. Doesn't have to be a lot, just needs to be a consistent so that it doesn't look boring. That's what I'm that's one of the things I like. I don't want it to be a boring flat color. Not to say that boring flat colors never have a place. Eight seconds to dry. With a medium nib. No feather, no spread, no halo, no sheen. A little darker, as we would expect them with the extra fine. So it's a darker color, and we are getting a bit wider variation in color. Our lows are a little lower, and our darks are a little darker. You see it in the fox. You see it in parts of the brown. The over. we got 14 seconds to dry with this ink. And when it comes to the scrubby... We see the color variation in both the extra fine and the medium on a scrubby. And on a smear, we would definitely be able to see it. <clears throat> we would definitely be able to recover what we wrote from that smear if we did smear it. Moving on to, moving on to Tomoe River paper. No bleed. Ghosting, of course. With a 1.1, no feather, no spread, no halo, no sheen, no shade. With the fine, or the extra fine, it gets darker. It gets darker than it did with the 1.1. We have no feather. We have no spread, no halo, no sheen, no shade, none. 17 seconds to dry. It takes a really long time. It's not a bad. It's like a dark powdery type blue. It's like in person, it's got an almost dusty look, which is very nice. It's a dusty look. It's a very nice color. With the medium... No feather, no spread, no halo, no sheen. We are getting color variation. You see it with the 30. You don't see it in a lot of other places. You see a little bit of it at the beginning of the over to end of over. Not a ton, but there is a little bit there. We don't expect a lot here. The ink levels out. Looking at the scrubby, you see that there's a little shade that shows up in the fine. Or the fine. I'm going to do that the whole time. Shows up at the extra fine, but it does not show up in the writing. And there's no shading that shows up in the medium scrubby, but there's a little every now and then in the writing. And on the smear, no recovery. It's lost. On to Rhodia. We have bleed in one spot. Tiny spot. Actually, nope, that's transfer. Belay my last. That's transfer. That's not bleed. So we have no bleed. We have no ghosting. Looking at the 1.1 at the top, we have no feather, no spread, no halo, no sheen. We are getting some color variation, which is nice. Onto the extra fine. It gets a tad bit darker. We have no feather, no spread, no halo, no sheen. Always well-performed performing paper. We are getting much more color variation in the, we see it. Quick, we see it. Brown, we, every word we get to see some of this color variation. It makes it a very nice ink to work with. It is popping on the white paper. Not so much on a cream color paper. On a white paper, it's definitely doing it. still has that kind of dusty look to it. On the medium, it definitely becomes a darker looking color. There's no feather, no spread, no halo, no sheen. Definitely getting some of that shading. Not as much. All of it gets darker, so the shading doesn't show up as much. 18 seconds to dry. And when we look at the scrubbies, we see that the fine shows the color variation. Not very much color variation goes on with the medium. And for the smear, in both cases, we would be able to recover this without too much difficulty. Moving on to white lines paper. Definite bleeding. So white lines has always been hit or miss with me. I pay attention to what inks work. Definitely bleeding. Did not hit the page underneath. Once there's bleeding, it doesn't matter if there's ghosting. It's not a ton. When it's not bleeding, the ghost isn't horrible. But it's definitely bleeding. Looking at the 1.1 stub. No feather. No spread. No halo. No sheen. 
no color variation, none of that. Moving on to the extra fine. Only a tad bit darker as a color. We don't experience feathering. We don't experience uh, spread. These marks on the K, that's not feathering. That was me. We have no halo, no sheen. Straightforward, not a horrible color. I don't know that this is my color for this paper. Five seconds to dry. With a medium nib, gets darker again. We start to experience... Oh, nope, that was just where it was getting ready to bleed through. It looks almost like there can be spots. Let's see if we can. It looks like there's almost spots. Come on, focus. With the quick. With the K, it looks like there's almost spots. You're not helping me at all, camera. There we go. With the K, there's almost spots right there where we see a little bit of feather. Nothing major. On the G of dog, it looks like we're going to start to get the beginning of feather. Huh. We're not getting it. I don't, I don't think it's the end of the world. So... We get the start of some feathers. It makes me feel like if I ran a much wetter or broader pen on this paper with this ink, I would get a lot of feathering. But then again, it bleeds through like crazy, and I would not run a wetter, broader pen on this paper knowing that. When I go to the scrubby on the extra fine and the medium, we do see some color variation, although we really don't get it in the writing. On the smear, it looks like you'd be able to read it. If you smeared your writing, it wouldn't end everything for you. Now, the next one I have is Franklin Kristoff. So, Franklin Kristoff paper, to me, is not bad paper. It just doesn't show off qualities of ink. We have no bleed. A couple, little bit, almost. No real bleed. That's the scrubby. No show through. So, it's doing well there. When we look at the 1.1 at the top, we see no feather. No spread, no halo, no sheen, no color variation. Doesn't come through with this. We move on to the extra fine. Gets a little bit darker of a color. We get no feather, no spread, no halo, no sheen. The paper does fine with all of that. But if you have a sheening ink, it does not come through as sheening. You lose the sheen on this paper. Seven seconds to dry. And on top of that, in this next part, what we get is on the medium, we start to get feathering on the medium. And I get really disappointed by that because this is paper put out by a fountain pen company. I have very high expectations. If a fountain pen company is putting out paper, it needs to perform top notch. Feathering's not good, especially with a medium. That's like the most common nib for people to use. So I have feathering on the M, on the the. I have feathering at the end of the jumps. Little feathers going on in the over. Feather in the two of the 12, feather in the seconds. I was just disappointed with how the Franklin Christoph papers performed. And that's that was as a majority. When it was wet, I sometimes saw that feathering on a Franklin Christoph. Just bothered me some. Looking at the how it goes down. There is feather, as explained. There is, there's, there's no spread. There's no halo, no sheen, no shade. We lose the shade. Like I said, what I found with the Franklin Kristoff is I lose those properties that ink can have. When I look at the scrubby, the fine, the extra fine shows a little bit of color variation. Even though it didn't show up in the writing itself, it shows up in the scrubby. No color variation shows up in the medium scrubby. And when it comes to the smear test to see can I recover it, yes. I would be able to recover it with this paper. So that's, that's that. Instead of finding inks that look like Birmingham's Andrew Carnegie, I would prefer to find an ink that really complements that dark blue on the page. I decided to go with a red ink, specifically Robert Oster Royal Red.
because of its being red. Before we get to my opinion on the ink, I'm asking, if you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. And if it's your first time here, I'd invite you to subscribe. Now to make sure I have a range of experience with this ink, I do the writing samples. I then put the ink into a different pen for a day. I also put that ink into Fountain Pen Revolution's Himalaya with its flex nib to take my notes for this video. So what do I think about Birmingham's Andrew Carnegie Steel Blue? It is not a bad blue, but with so many blues to choose from, I don't think this would be the one I go for. So now the big question, would I buy a bottle of this ink? Simply no, but not for any reason against the ink. Again, there's just so many blue options out there, I might choose something else. Thanks for watching.